big, big West Ham transfer news last night has emerged. All the big hitters are out in force covering this story. Emerged the Hammers are stepping up their interest in Sassuolo striker Gianluca Scamacca. Now, we've actually been linked to Scamacca for quite a while now. A month, a month and a half maybe, just here and there. I've not read too much into it, perhaps naively, for a couple of reasons. One, it seems a bit ambitious. He's strongly linked to the likes of PSG. His price tag has always been quite high. He's thought of as Italy's number nine, or certainly future number nine. So it seemed maybe a little bit out of our reach, a little bit unrealistic, perhaps. And secondly, and this is the naive one, I don't know him. I just find it difficult when I don't know a player enough to see how he would fit into David Moyes' plans. And because I can't visualise it, I struggle to believe the rumour a little bit. Let's compare it to more well-known players to you and I, such as Amanda Broja or Emmanuel Dennis. So when we're linked to them... I can see, I know what kind of player they are. I can, I can watch them and say, yeah, okay, I can see why Moyes would be after them. I can see them fitting into the way that we play at West Ham under David Moyes easily. So it sort of increases my confidence in the transfer rumour, if you like. But when it comes to players I'm not too familiar with, like Skamaka, I struggle with it a little bit. So when the rumour comes round, I'll read it, I'll absorb it. But it's difficult for me to convince myself that the rumour's true. However, I have with this one... Because of the reporters reporting it. Like I said, all the big hitters were out last night. We had De Marzio leading with the story, backed up by the likes of Fabrizio Romano, Express Employee, Dormesh, Jacob Steinberg, all reporting the interest. Some reporting there's already a bid gone in, some reporting that there hasn't. But the interest certainly is consistent between all the good sources when it comes to West Ham transfers. Now, the price tag is 50 million euros. That's how much Sassoula won. 42 million pounds to you and I. The bid, the supposed bid, is around about 33 million that we've made. So we're quite far off Sassuolo's valuations. However, the reports suggest that we're still working on them and that the interest is genuine and we do want Skamaka. In regards to PSG, the belief is that they won't meet Sassuolo's asking price. And West Ham are actually quite confident they can outbid PSG, which just seems mental, doesn't it? Do you not think that just sounds mental? Saying that out loud, that's what the reports are saying. I don't make this up. I just read it and tell you guys and give you my opinion. But the reports are, let me repeat, West Ham can outbid PSG. Seems a little bit wild, doesn't it? Now, while my opinion on the player is very, very limited, I've only seen him a handful of times, most recently against England, where he didn't look that great. Um, I've got a couple of friends who do watch Italian football. They seem to think that this would be a bit of a coup for West Ham and that he's an unbelievable striker. And if you're watching this and you've got an opinion on Skamaka and you've seen him play, please leave it in the comments below. I'll be back later on tonight to take a look at what you guys are saying. But a 23-year-old Italian striker, plays for Sassuolo, 16 goals in Serie A last season as well. And the interest from West Ham appears to be genuine. So there's a lot more to come on this story. But it does also go hand-in-hand hand with the other striker target Armando Broja I've always believed that Broja was the number one target I still do to some extent but earlier on sort of when Darmesh was on Sky Sports he was saying that West Ham do have other high profile alternatives while he's the number one target it's not the only target so this sort of leads into there and also in the last 24 48 hours um, Broja has flown out to the States with Raheem Sterling Raheem Sterling and Broja got on the same private plane and went to LA to join up with Chelsea for their pre-season tour. I'm a bit confused as to why he stayed behind at all, by the way. Um, you know, they flew out Friday, I think it was. Chelsea's squad flew out and he stayed behind. And then I know the report said, oh, he might fl fly out next week and join up with them. I thought, well, it's a bit strange as to why. Was, what, was there not enough seats on the plane or something? And he was the one that just didn't get to go. It just didn't really add up to me. I felt it was almost like... A deadline for West Ham saying, look, we're going to leave Broha in London for one week. You've got a week to do your business. You've got a week to convince us to sell him. If not, we're going to fly him back over. I thought it was like a game of bluff to some extent, but it turns out it's not. He's, he's off to the States with, with uh, Raheem Sterling. So that transfer seems to have just got a little bit trickier um, anyway. Plenty more transfer rumours coming up, including Sar. We've got David Ram, which I'm very excited about. We've got the latest on Amadou Onana and also Manuel Lanzini, which is quite interesting. I'm looking forward to discussing that one with you hypothetically as well. But before we get on to all that, this video is sponsored by the free One Football app. It's free. It costs you nothing. You can download it by using the link in the description. Please do use that link so that they know you've come from Hammershack. 
get it downloaded to your device today. It's the best way of keeping up to date with all the transfer rumours going on at your club. You don't even have to be a West Ham fan. Your club will be on there. You can keep up to date with all those transfer rumours. And as the Hammers, I know you'll be thinking, well, why do we need that when you tell us the latest transfer rumours? We're going to tell you about 85%. There's other transfer rumours on the One Football app as well. And even the ones that we discuss in this video is in greater detail with the original source on the One Football app. It's not just transfer rumours, it's transfer news. It's also match reports, including friendlies last night that weren't able to watch. That's on the One Football app too. But don't just keep up to date with your club, you can keep up to date with your country. So when I go on the One Football app, I click profile, I've got the West Ham, team, West Ham badge there, I've got the Scotland flag. I've also got the Premier League emblem, so I can have a look at all the major headlines from around the Premier League, including Nottingham Forest signing Nico Williams for 18 million. Good signing that, I think. Anyway, Saar. The reports this week are that West Ham are to step up their interest in Watford's winger Saar. He's been left behind in London. He's not going on the pre-season tour. And he's not expected to join up with them a week later on a private jet either. So he's been left behind along with Danny Rose, Emmanuel Dennis and one other Watford player. I can't remember who it is. But they've been left behind as they're expected to leave Watford this summer and not play any part in the upcoming championship campaign. So the reports are that West Ham are going to go after him. Now, the one thing that's changed quite drastically, actually, in the last month in regards to West Ham's interest in Watford Saar is his agent. His agent is Wasserman, um, who is the same agent as Flynn Downs. And as we know, Mark Warburton, who's the assistant coach of David Moyes now, his daughter um, works at the agency. So that has changed. I do wonder if that might be something that's going to give us a little bit of an advantage in our pursuit for, for Saar be interesting if we do go after him. And this is where my West Hamitis creeps in because what's Saar going to cost? 20 million maybe? Do we have enough money to spend 30 million on a striker, 20 million on Saar, plus a centre midfielder, plus a left back? I mean, that's a lot of cash, isn't it? And I know there was reports a while ago about us spending 150 million, but I didn't believe them, all right? There is a little bit of logic that says, well, we've not really spent that much money in the last couple of seasons, plus, you know, Sol Sebastian Allier didn't replace him. But there's still part of me that says, nah, I'm not having that. There must, be, there must be something going on here. We're not spending that much money. No, and if we do, is Declan Rice leaving? That's my, that's my West ham is creeping in. So that's the latest on Sar as well. So fingers crossed that we do make a move. Bloody good player, isn't he? Um, now the next one, David Ram. Now this is the one that gets me a little bit excited. And it comes from Jacob Steinberg. When he did his uh, article last night about uh, Gianluca Scamacca, he mentioned in it that West Ham still retain an interest in David Ram. Now, when we were initially linked to him about a month ago, I covered it in detail in there. But I'll give a little brief explanation of the circumstances around David Ram. And why, I, maybe not, hopefuls may be um, too strong. But I do think there's a deal there to be done if we wanted him. Because... Um, he's a 24, yes, 24 year old left back for Hoffenheim over in the Bundesliga. A fantastic player. A really good, de I, oh, I say really, a strong defender, a good defender, but unbelievable going forward. Um, plays left wing back for the Germany national side as well. Played against England in the Nations League. I thought he was really, really impressive in that game. But going forward, he's just incredible. Produces insane numbers for crosses, for chances created. Really, really good. Um, I'd get excited about him coming to West Ham. Now, a month ago, we obviously had Manchester United in the running for him. Since then, they've obviously signed Tyrell Malassia. So, Man United don't need to sign David Ram. Saying that, if Luke Shaw was available, I would not mind him at West Ham next season. I'll say that for free right now. But in regards to David Ram, the only other club that's strongly linked to him is Dortmund. However, Dortmund are prepared to wait till next summer. And this is with the circumstances. Currently, as it stands, there's no clauses. Um, if you want him, you've got to negotiate with Hoffenheim and pay what they want, which is apparently £33 million. Next summer, however, there is a clause in his contract which allows him to leave for £25 million. So Dortmund are basically prepared to wait till next summer, pay £25 million and get their man. They don't have to negotiate. They get him for £8 million less. Happy days. But that's why Hoffenheim might be inclined to sell this summer to someone like West Ham because they get more money than they would next year and also he moves outside the Bundesliga he doesn't go to a, a German rival club so I do wonder if there's a deal to be done should our interest be genuine but again it would cost 33 million that's a lot of money is he worth it 
I think he is, you know. Um, I think in terms of like the bracket of left backs, you've got the world class bracket. I think he's just below that in that elite left back position. Um, it'd be very exciting. Would give us a real attacking option from that left side. Like I said, defensively could be better, but what fullback couldn't these days? You look, Trent Alexander Arnold is one of the best fullbacks in the world. Defensively, he's not the greatest, is he? I think that's a bit like David Ram. I would love to see him at West Ham United next season. Do I believe the rumour? I mean, Steinberg's as good a source as it gets when it comes to West Ham. But I just can't see it, given the price involved and what else we're trying to do in the transfer window. But I do think a left-back's crucial this summer. Still wouldn't mind Luke Shaw, by the way. I would do oh nine nine. Now, the latest in regards to him is that, well, we've not made a third bid yet. We also had the bid rejected late last week over the weekend of £25 million. Um, waiting to see if we'll go back in with a third. But there's some reports in France suggesting that Onana is keen on the move to West Ham and he's sort of pushing for the move as well. He's quite inclined to try and get this transfer through and that Onana wants the move to West Ham United, which is perhaps interesting. And lastly, we're going to finish with an update on Manuel Lanzini. So the last transfer rumour show mentioned that there was rumours linking him to Besiktas. Now, there's sort of as the follow-up, the rumours of the rumours, are uh, that West Ham are open to selling Lanzini this summer for a 12 million. Obviously, he's only got one year to go on his contract. West Ham do have an option for a further two years on that, which we can trigger at any time. There is some reports that were set to open negotiations for a new contract at the end of the transfer window, as we are with Thomas Suchek and Jared Bowen. But in the meantime... We're open to selling for a 12 million, which I think is a fair fee all in. What is he, 29 years old, injury-wise? It's a bit hit and miss, I think. For every good game, I think he has a game where he goes missing. Not necessarily plays rubbish. I think playing rubbish is when you're passing sloppy, blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of games, I wouldn't say Lanzini's poor. You just don't notice him very much. He's not very involved. So, um... I wouldn't say he's indispensable at the club. An important player, a big fan of Lanzini. So is Gonzo. You know, I think on this channel we have been a big fan, maybe too big a fan of Lanzini at times. But given his circumstances, like I said, his age, his injury record, I think twelve million for, for Lanzini wouldn't, wouldn't be the worst price in the world. And then when you consider the fact that we may be selling Diop for between fifteen and twenty million, if we could get thirty million for Diop and Lanzini combined. That gives you a lot of wiggle room in the transfer market, doesn't it? Um, that starts to justify why we perhaps are interested in all these players. So that's the latest transfer rumours anyway. Tomorrow I'm back with a video. It's a very short video. It's about five minutes long. We, we hear from Amy, who's a Swansea City fan. She gives her opinion on Flynn Downs. Obviously, we've all seen a bit of Flynn Downs at Swansea. Um, some of us saw a bit of Flynn Downs last night at West Ham. I did it because there was no streams. I'm still a bit annoyed by that. Can you tell? Anyway, she gives her thoughts. So tomorrow, tomorrow's video is some, uh, basically a Swansea City fan's opinion on Flynn Downs. And then on Friday, I'll finally have my attacking midfielders video uh, ready. My wish list. So that should be the final vi uh, video of the series. Just one more to do, which is my full wish list, if you like. So thanks for everybody getting involved. Anyway, enjoy, enjoy this video. Drop a like on it. Subscribe to your channel. Catch you tomorrow.